to others our own craftiness and deceit, we as people of Christ, even washed in baptism, we come to his church to confess our sins, and we're still the same sinners we were yesterday. We don't hesitate to sin the moment that we leave the church. I don't wake up in the morning with my alarm going off without sinning because I curse my alarm because I'm tired. None of us for an instant cease to be our sinful selves. So why is it then that God keeps forgiving us? Because we're the patriarchs of Israel. We are the brothers of Joseph. He is the Christ-like figure in the story. He weeps because we don't really believe him. His own apostles come before him to say, Lord Jesus, we believe. Help thou our unbelief. In their finest moment of epiphany and self-understanding, they know that they don't believe and they believe at the same time. We repent and we don't repent at the same time. We say we're sorry, Jesus, but we're not really sorry at the same time. We're the brothers of Joseph, but Christ in his mercy is Joseph. Joseph symbolizes what Christ will be, the firstborn, the first fruits among those resurrected from the dead, the one who has blotted out all our transgressions. He keeps forgiving us constantly, over and over again, and in his agony, he knows we don't really believe him. Not all the time, not perfectly, not truly, torn as we are in body and soul between the sinful world that we are attached to and the divine kingdom that he has washed us clean and summoned us to, we never get it right. Our repentance is half-hearted. Our confession of him is weak and faint, but he is not. Joseph is driven to the agony of knowing his brothers don't get it. Jesus lives with the assurance of his divinity that he will clean us, that he will cleanse us, that he will make us new. He gets the assurance that Joseph can only have by trusting in God Almighty. Jesus knows how weak, half-hearted, and frail we are. And he knows how we love the futile things of the world, and he knows the futility of our own confessions and repentance. He chooses to believe us anyway. He does the opposite of what we do. He does what Joseph did. He believed his brother's repentance when he knew they didn't believe his forgiveness. Jesus believed. He chooses to believe that we are repentant of our sins when we say it, ignoring the part of us that is not sorry. He chooses as God to accept us for what we confess to be true, despite the part of us he knows doesn't believe it. He went to the cross to die for us because of such frailty. He knew we could never make it spiritually on our own. He is the one that will restore the creation away from futility to eternity and to perfection. Built not of our weakness, but of his strength. In Jesus' name, amen.
the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, hear us, be gracious and merciful to us, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, good Lord, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, good Lord, and all times of precious memory and joy, especially for Jeff and Laura, by the illumination of your grace, good Lord, in all time of our tribulation, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, good Lord, we poor sinners implore you to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, good Lord. Amen. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, good Lord. Yes. To watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, sickness, and tribulation, especially Hugh, John, Julie, Debbie, Gina, Marilyn, Robin, Mark, Ross, Steve, David, Kathy, Bernie, Margaret, Abby, Annie, Ethan, Shelley, David, Norm, Nicholas, Margie, Landon, Tabitha, Mira, Ezekiel, Patricia, Rich, Debbie, Richard, and Jeff. Good Lord, deliver us, O, oh, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. Good Lord, deliver us. Deliver us, O oh Lord. Strengthen, enlighten, and preserve us. For to you alone we ascribe all glory, honor, and power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Father and 